Have you ever heard the phrase, you got to work hard for your money? My question for you is, do you? I know a lot of people who don't work hard for their money. In fact, I don't even believe in working hard for money. Now, here's, here's what I'm going to say. I do believe in working hard, and I do believe in making money. I just don't believe in working hard for money. I believe there are better reasons to work hard, and I be, believe there are better ways to make money. And in this video, you're going to find out what they are. See, here's what I discovered. People who work hard for money don't understand how to play the money game. And people who make lots of money, they make lots of money playing games. I play business games, I play investment games, and those business and investment games make me money. For instance, I'm going to give you all some very specific examples. So I just ordered a 2023 custom Sprinter van for picking up clients and in full disclosure, taking me places when I need to go places and I need to be working on something while I'm getting there so I'm not driving and doing podcast interviews in it and so on and so forth. So I just ordered this custom Sprinter van. So it's $165,000, which I got a great deal on it. So thank you, Lee. Okay, I got a great deal on it. But so now I can write a check for it or I can finance it. If I write a check for it, I pay zero interest, okay? But if I finance it, I found two funding companies. One of them I haven't talked to yet. I just got approved for the loan in my own personal name, which I didn't want to buy it in my personal name. I wanted to buy it in my business name. So I got approved for a loan in my personal name for, to, pay for the, to pay for the vehicle. Okay, I'm probably going to have to put 20000 down. Cool. I also got, just signed up for this week, a $200,000 business line of credit in my business name. So... The $200,000 line of credit my business name is, it's almost loan sharkish, okay? So it is, they charge you 5% of every time you do a withdrawal, they charge you 5%. Then the payments are, depending on how much of it you take out, so I'm gonna, like if I do the loan, which I'm probably gonna do it, the interest rate is 16% on $200,000. That's insanical. Y'all know that's insane, right? but I wanna do it as a social experiment to show everybody that interest rates are largely smoke and mirrors if you understand how to play the money game. So what I'm gonna do, more than likely, and I haven't decided yet because I wanna look at all the terms, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna borrow the entire $200,000. I'm gonna take the entire $200,000. They're immediately gonna charge me $10,000 because $10,000 is 5% of $200,000. So now I'm going to take the 200,000. I instantly owe them 210,000. And the payments are $19,000 a month. Okay, which is fairly significant. So why would I do it? If I already got a loan for the van, but I also got the line of credit, why would I get the line of credit and then pay $19,000 a month on money I don't even need? That's a good question, right? Here's why. Because, the, first of all, let me tell you why I'm going to borrow the money even though I could write the check. I'm going to borrow the money to buy the van because my money makes me more money than the bank will charge me, even at 19%. So, um, two days ago when we recorded our video on um, the window of wealth, right after I got done with that video, I did a trade. And I got in a trade, and I'm not going to go into what the trade was. I just got into a trade. Well, yesterday, I was, by the time I got out of some of those positions, I was up $192,000 in 48 hours. Plus, I, I took $105,000 of that off the table. That was $105,000 profit off the table, plus the principal that I had in that trade. So it's $105,000 profit I made in 48 hours that I took off the table and still have another $89,000 sitting there to see what the market's going to do today. Because that, that, that transaction doesn't expire until the end of September. So I can leave that money in there until the end of September. And, and, and so, so in telling you what the game was that I played, I bought 600 contracts of puts on the S&P 500. You don't have to know what that means. Here's what, here's what it means to me. I think the S&P 500 is going to go down. If it does go down, 
with 600 contracts of, um, so 100 is 10, so every dollar that the spider goes down, the spider ETF goes down, I make $60,000. Every dollar it goes down. But watch this. Every dollar it goes up, I lose $60,000. So this is why I don't trade all the time. I only trade when I see a trade formation happening. And so, so I bought 600 contracts. I bought them for $11.64. When I sold the first 300, I sold them for $14 and I forgot, $14 and 50 cents maybe. I made a profit of $2.43 on, th on 3,000 um, contracts. So I made $2.43 times 30,000 profit. Took it off the table in 48 hours. Then I waited a little bit later that day, sold some more for $14.89, made another $3 and something off of another 100 contracts, and then I kept the last 200 contracts in play in case the market fought, fell off the face of the earth today. I still have 200 contracts. If, it goes to, if the S&P 500 goes down 10 points, then I've, with 200 contracts, I'll make $200,000. Um, if it goes down 100 points, I'll make $2 million. Okay. And the Fed's speaking today, and so... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a stop profit so that if it goes up crazy high, it stops me out with profit and I lose no money and I've just made free money. Okay. Why did I tell you all that whole story? Because people think that the primary thing they should look at when they borrow money is an interest rate, but an interest rate is often a distraction. It's not always a distraction, but it's often a distraction. Like if you, how many of you have ever gotten an invitation in your mortgage to refinance your house? right? And you can get a lower payment, right? And a lower interest rate. Well, why are they giving you, like, ask yourself the question, why are they giving you a lower payment, a lower interest rate? Here's why. Because they know something you don't know. They understand the game. See, if you don't understand the money game, then you have to work on the board as one of the pieces for the people who understand how to play the game. And the banks understand how to play the game. So they'll send you a letter saying, we're going to give you a lower interest rate and you'll have a lower monthly payment on your mortgage. But the reason they're going to do that is because if you do that, you got, say, 13 years left on your mortgage. Now you have to start a whole new 30-year mortgage. And the first 10 years of your mortgage, most of the money you pay goes to interest. So even though you're paying lower, a lower interest rate when you refinance your house and get a lower payment, even though you're paying a lower interest rate, you're paying more in interest than if you had kept the higher interest rate with the higher payment. They know you don't know that. They don't tell you that part of it. It's in the paperwork, but they don't tell you that part because they know they've already distracted you by making you think the interest rate is the most important thing. Now, what, should it, what would be better for a person to do than that? Let's say you understand the money game. What would be better would be to get a home equity line of credit for the equity that you have and put that home equity line of credit in the first position if you can. Make your mortgage a home equity line of credit. And then every time you get paid, deposit your check into your mortgage balance and then use the checkbook that comes with your home equity line of credit to pay your bills. You'll pay off your mortgage probably in three to seven years if you do it that way. Like making the exact same amount of money you make right now, you'll pay off your mortgage in three to seven years, 12 at the outside, instead of paying off your mortgage in 30 years. Now, th this is... This is so I went to, when I go to, like, when I went to Israel, in Israel, like in Greece, euros are pretty easy to understand. You go to Israel, they trade in shekels, right? I don't know a shekel from heckle and jekyll, right? So I remember I was at the airport, I went and got some, um, some Israeli money, and I go to buy something to eat, and they gave me some change, I could only hope that it was the right amount, because I had no idea what the word said on there, I had no idea what I was looking at. Right? And so, so, like I am in Israel, that's how most Americans are in America. They don't know how to read the money, so they don't know if they're getting a good deal or a bad deal. They just have to take somebody else's word for it. So, so what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but if I do do it, I'm going to document it so it'll be on my YouTube channel so y'all will be able to see. I'm probably going to borrow the $200,000. I'm going to use the $200,000 to make money because I'm sure it can make me more than $20,000 a month. And then I'm gonna let 
whatever business or investment vehicle that I create to pay off the loan, I'm gonna let that pay off the loan. And so eventually, once it pays off the loan, all of the money that I have, I will have now as free money. See, getting out of debt is fine. And I could, like, if I wanted to, I could pay, pay off all my debts today. I have no, like, I don't, I use debt. I don't let debt use me. I pay off all of my credit cards every month down to zero balance, and it doesn't matter what it gets up to. And I pay, like, and we've done as much as $450,000 on our credit card in a single month. We pay them off every month. Every month, we pay off our credit cards. Okay, so I don't, I'm not talking about using consumer debt and letting it use you. I'm talking about I'm talking about using debt to create wealth and then letting the wealth that the debt create that the debt created pay off the debt. That's what this building, this building I borrowed 400 and something thousand dollars to pay $625,000 for this building. But this building because we turned it into a YouTube studio makes us 40 to $50,000 a month. Oh. So one of the things I could do, think about this. I could put I could put this space, this building, on peer space. I could hire somebody just to manage the peer space of this building. Chris just got here, so I could hire somebody just to manage, and he's, he's the genius who taught me about this. Okay, right, see, so doing it right now. So, so we could, we could, we could, I could put this building on peer space, rent it out for $300 an hour with no equipment, 500 an hour with no equipment, and so I don't use it at all on Tuesdays. I don't use it at all on Thursdays. We could build two more podcast studios over there. We could rent this side out for $300 to five, for $500 an hour, rent that side out for $500 an hour, and we could keep doing that over and over and over again and let that make the money to pay the employee and pay off the $200,000. I could use that $200,000 to upgrade the other side. You see what I'm saying? So, so business people think about money making money and money costing money in different ways than poor people think about it. Poor people just want to know what the payment is. Rich people don't care what the payment is as long as the money that it makes is more than the payment. This building, this building makes me almost 10, it makes me more than 10 times, 10 times. It makes me more than 10 times per month what the monthly payment is when you look at all the sources. Some people look at it, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, a $5,300 a month mortgage, I don't know. It's, it's, it's nebulous when you understand how to play the game. Same thing with Airbnb, peer space. Uh, same thing with Turo. You just, whatever the business vehicle is, there's so much opportunity in the world today, which is one of the reasons there's less, there are less jobs. There are less jobs because there's more business opportunities. There's more opportunities for average, ordinary, regular folk to create wealth than there have ever been in the history of the world. My daughter is um, a mom, a married woman with a child. She was making $25 an hour when she was 11. My son was making $117 an hour when he was 17 because they had skills that they knew how to use to serve people who needed it done, who wanted the work done more than they wanted the money. And see, one of the reasons you don't play the game of money well is because you don't spend enough time thinking about how to solve other people's problems. How many of y'all tracking? And so what we want to do is we wanna, if, if we can figure out how to solve enough big problems for enough people, those people will pay us enough money that we don't ever have to think about money ever again. So I'm going to tell you some of the, some of the business games that I So that's, those are some of the investment games that I play. Like I've got a house in Pennsylvania that I've owned since 2003, um, which means we only have 10 more years on that mortgage, right? And I only owe like $104,000 on that house. But how much does it rent for, Chris, a day right now in Airbnb? Oh, each room. So we rent the rooms. $145 a day, and we're only rent, it's a four-bedroom house, but we're only renting out two rooms because the back two rooms we're saving for me and my family when we go to Pennsylvania, and so I don't, I know I'm a little interesting, but I don't want anybody sleeping in my bed but me. <laughs> so, so, you know, they can use the rest of the house. So, so we're renting out two bedrooms in this four-bedroom house, and it's got a lot of other space as well for um, $104 a day. If we keep it rented 20 days a month, it brings in $2,000 a month. 
right? That more than pays the mortgage. And so we're probably gonna also turn it into a peer space, but I don't have time to go into that, which could, which could make, what, six, 15, 16,000 a month? Yeah, yeah, five, six times that. So, so there are ways to, you just have to learn to think differently and play games. Now, business games that I play. The business games that I play, and I started playing a long time ago, the first business game that I ever created was 10 no's in a row. I created this game for myself and for the people that I taught, 10 no's in a row. Here's your objective. You go out, you make offers to people, offers to, as you're prospecting them, and your goal is to get 10 people in a row to tell you no. Okay, so watch what happens. Talk to the first person, they say no. Talk to the second person, they say no. Talk to the same third person, they say no. Talk to the fourth person, they say no. Talk to the fifth person, they say yes. Now you got to start over. So what happened was, one of the reasons people can't make sales is because they're afraid of no. So I turned no into the thing I was looking for instead of the thing I was seeking to avoid. And I turned it into a game, and I got so good at the game that I got to the point where people didn't tell me no anymore because I could tell when they were getting ready to tell me no, and I'd tell them no first. <laughs> now I love the game. See, and so basically when I say it's a game, I'm playing a game in my head. Like, and I just think of new things to add to the game. Every month we do a challenge. It's a five-day challenge. It costs $97 for general admission. It costs $297 for VIP experience. One of the games I play is I want to see every month if we can sell more VIP tickets than general admission tickets. That's a game that I play. Now, how do you sell more VIP tickets and they cost more? It's easy. I allow the risk to remain in the general admission ticket, but I reverse the risk in the VIP ticket. What does that mean? So the VIP ticket, it's $297. It comes with a 10 times better than money back guarantee, which means if you don't believe it was worth $2,970 when we're done on Friday, all you have to do is send us an email. I'm going to send you your money back. Just say it wasn't worth, I don't feel like it was worth 10 times what I paid for it. So the $297 comes with a 10 times better than money back guarantee. The $97 comes with a, once you pay me, I got your money guarantee. So <laughs> we almost always have more $297 VIPs than we do $97 general admissions. But guess what happened? We used to let, general, we used to let VIPs ask questions. We had, we had a challenge, we had 400 something people on it. People were mad because they couldn't ask questions. I don't want people mad at me. So how can we make this game more fun for all of us? I'm gonna create a VIP platinum that costs, it used to cost $300 more. So in addition to the 297, then they pay 297 more, so 697, then they get, only the people who paid the 697 can ask questions. Well, the last challenge we, the, the challenge we did in July, we had so many, we had 50 platinums. We sold out of platinums. And we almost didn't have enough time to answer all the platinums questions. So guess what we did? We raised the price for platinum to $500. It's not only those who are serious get to ask questions, but they get to ask as many questions as they want to. And somebody might be thinking, well, why would somebody pay $500 to ask a question? Because they'd rather pay me $500 to ask me a question than pay me $40,000 to talk to me for an hour and I'll answer all their questions. And so it's all about the game. And until you learn how to play the game, I promise you, you are being played by the game. And if you don't want to be played by the game, learn how to play the game. And I'm not saying the people who know how to play the game, they're all, they all have bad intentions. They obviously don't. I don't have bad intentions. But it's, a, it's either going to be a game for me or it's going to be work for me. If I'm going to work, I'd rather work for something that's way more valuable than money. What could that possibly be? Like, what could be more valuable than money to work for? Like, I'm not going to work hard for money. In fact, I'm going to do my best not to work for money at all. I'm going to create things that create money. So I'm going to work to build a system that can pay me from now on. So I work to build systems that pay me. What does that even mean? So like a funnel, for instance, our, our 
our Boss Moves book funnel. So every book that I write is a system. This is a system. This is a system where I turn $2.50 into $30 plus $10 shipping and handling. That's what this is. I wrote this book one time. How many times did I write the book? One time. Wrote the book one time. Last month, we sold 700 copies of the book at $30 a piece, plus in the United States, $9.99 shipping and handling. Outside the United States, $25 shipping and handling. If you sell 700 books for $30, that's $21,000 for work I did three years ago. That's $21,000 in one month for work I did three years ago. So I worked really hard to write this book. I don't work at all to sell it. I just have a funnel out there. People watch my YouTube videos. People read the book. They'll share. They, when they get their book, they post it on Instagram. They, they tag me. I take their Instagram story, share it to my Instagram story, and insert a link to the book. Karina runs an infomercial every night. All night long, we, turn, we, like we have an Instagram infomercial. So she runs this info. She, turns it on at night, maybe right before she goes to bed and people can watch it. And then we take it down in the morning. We have one for this book. We have one for this book. And we have one for the Make More Offers Challenge. We got infomercials that run all night. That's a system. And so I work hard to build systems while you're working hard to make money. That's why when you stop working, you stop getting paid. But when I stop working, I keep getting paid because to me, it's a game. I'm gonna work hard to build a system. I'm gonna work hard to learn a new skill. To me, learning a new skill is worth working hard for. Making money is not. Okay? So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to work hard to learn a skill. I'm going to work hard to build a system. What else am I going to work hard to do? I'm going to work hard to build really good relationships with really good people. But everything else is a game. It's all a game. I'm just playing. I'm playing business games. Making offers. I created an offer for the United States government. I'm going to make that offer to them. I'm going to make the offer to the Department of Defense. I'm going to make the offer to the Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm going to make the offer to the Department of the Army. I'm going to make the Department to the Department of the Navy, to the Department of the Air Force. And I'm going to keep on making that offer to the government until one of them says, okay, we'll take it. And when they do, it'll be to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. And it, it's not work. It's a game. It's a game. It's like, how many people do I have to go through and how many people do I have to go to to get one of them to say yes? But see... Because here's why a lot of times people have a hard time when they get started in business from being an employee. Because being an employee got you addicted to a paycheck. So when you start your business, you're starting the business because you want to make money instead of building something that will make you money. That's the difference. The game is how do I build something that's going to make me money, not how do I do this work to make money. Does, does, is what I'm saying make sense? Making sense? So, so there's, there's, there's investment games. And there's business games. Like, I, somebody was telling me they were getting ready to buy Bitcoin when it was $30,000. I said, I wouldn't do that. I don't even remember who it was. I said, I wouldn't do that. Bitcoin goes down to, like, it hits the basement every October. So it goes down in the fall and it goes up in the spring. So if you want to buy Bitcoin, I'm not, I'm not, this, is not, this, is not a, this is not a recommendation. I'm not saying go buy Bitcoin. But if you want to buy Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, you buy it in the fall when it gets down so low, it feels like the bottom's about to fall out. Then you buy it. When everybody else is scared of it, everybody else is selling, then you're buying. When everybody else is buying, then you start selling. That you got to learn how to play the game, but you got to understand the rules of the game. And see, what happens is most people are playing checkers with their life while the system is using them as pawns on a chessboard. So, like I said before, if you don't learn how to play the game, you're always going to be played by the game. And if you don't want to be played by the game, turn making money into a game instead of just working for money your whole life. Hopefully that helps somebody but if you want to win at the money game, those are some of the things that I would recommend you do. Like, it's, it's interesting. Like, I, I speak, and I, like, if somebody wants me to come speak for them, I charge $250,000 an hour. I mean, $250,000 to come to a speech, plus they have to pay all my expenses, including private jet travel, which is $11,000 an hour for me to get there and get back. Okay. You charge how much? Yeah, that's how much you charge. Now, here's what's cool. You say, Myron, why did you make your fee so high? Because I like sleeping in my own bed and staying at my own house. If you're going to make me leave, I'm going to make you pay. See, that's the game. <laughs> Y'all understand? That's the game. For me, that's the game. 
And so if you want me that badly, then, then I'm gonna come help you. But if you don't want me that badly, you don't want me. And I'm okay with that. Most people, most people build their business in a way where they're out wanting people to say yes to their offers. I build my business in a way that only the best people say yes to my offers and everybody else says no. I don't have to deal with any of the headache. It'll change your life when you understand that it's all a game. So when I'm speaking, let's say I'm speaking and I'm selling from the stage. So I do all this really theatrical, really goofy stuff. Some of y'all have been to some events where I've been speaking at. So one of the things I do, I teach this lesson called um, repetitive use. People think that because they can't do it now, that that means they just can't do it. Well, just because you can't do it now doesn't mean you can't do it, right? And so I'll get down and start doing push-ups. And I'll say, you know, when I remember when I first started wanting to get back in shape, I started doing push-ups. And I thought, I'm going to do 50 push-ups, right? Or I'm going to do 30 push-ups. And I'd get down and I could barely do three. And I'd just lay there. And I'd get down on the floor and start doing push-ups. And I'd just lay there on the floor and say, this push-up thing doesn't work, right? But the next day I come back, and not only did I not get stronger, I'm weaker. Now I can only do two. I'm still laying on the floor talking the whole time. Why? I'm playing. I'm playing. You know why I'm playing? I'm playing because you will always make more money if you let the little child in you connect with the little child in other people than you will by attempting to have the adult in you impress the adult in other people. Because people will like you better when they see the little child in you. They will trust you more when they see the little child in you. They may not be as impressed, but they'll be way more impacted. And so I get on the floor, and I'm laying on the floor, and I say, and I just keep going, and I just, it's just not going to work. And then by day 10, I get down to do my three push-ups, and all of a sudden, I can't stop. And I, I'm just laying there on the floor. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't stop, I can't stop. And people go bananas. But all I'm doing is playing in front of people. I'm not trying to impress them. What am I doing? I'm just showing them that it's okay to be a real human being and still get paid. See what I'm saying? Is what I'm saying making sense? So learn how to play the game so you don't get played by the game. And that's how you win at the game. Hope it helps. Peace out, Cub Scouts.